separate Bosnians who were both in the film industry got in touch with me. One was Tatiana Boni and the other one was Yasenko Pasic and they both had the idea of we should make this a proper documentary. Um, and so rather than um, me saying okay well go and have fun making a documentary I wanted to get involved in it and, um, and so I wanted to make it with them. Now I'm not a filmmaker but it was very important to me that it told the truth and that it was an honest film. I think that was the most important thing to me. Um, so I, I was involved early on in the discussions about how we were going to progress and, and what basic format it was going to take. Um, and, there, and I got Bruce involved and Alex Elena and um, I started trying to get some of the, the British end of the people. Yasenko at the same time was getting in touch with uh, the Bosnians who appeared in the film. I remember, I, I like, um, you know, I'll, I'll try and speak a bit of uh, local languages and our truck driver said to me, oh, do you speak any, you know, what we called Serbo-Croat at the time? And, uh, and I was like, oh, you govorim malo, I'm trying my homework, you know. And this truck driver just looked at me and he said, um, you don't speak when you're here, okay? When we get to the military checkpoints, you don't talk to any of the soldiers and you don't look them in the eye either. And I was like, oh, okay, and he goes, well, you're not here to make friends. Getting through the military checkpoints is strictly a business issue and you just don't want to attract any attention to yourself. And there was a few little bits like that in the truck journey. And I think I said in the film about when we stopped for a, a, a pee break and, um, and they told us not to go near the sides of the road because they might be mined. And as we're getting further in, we're hearing shell fire. It was just, that truck journey was just like, um, it was just every step of it got scarier and scarier. <laughs> but unfortunately, the further we went in, the less chance there was of coming out. Because it's not like you could just go, oh, look, guys, this is too scary for me. I I'm out of here, sorry. And just jump out of the truck and start walking back down the road with the military checkpoints and the landmines. <laughs> Well, that's, I, I mean, obviously everyone's memories are different and Bruce and Alex speak in the film about what an impression the actual concert made on them. And what I think I meant in my quote there was the concert for me was the most familiar part of the day. I was playing bass guitar on some songs I knew with a band that I knew very well and that was like, that was the closest to normal life we got that weekend. But every other single moment of that weekend was exceptional. Um, apart from the concert, you know, what we're just like um, what we ate. We were eating UN rations, um, and the UN at the time were eating pasta and baked beans. Um, you know, so everything is completely exceptional. You don't you don't eat pasta and baked beans in normal life as a meal. I mean, obviously, what the people of Sarajevo were eating would be even less than that. Um, and so and so everything there had a big effect on me. And like I say, the concert really being the most minor part of it. I mean, I'm very, I'm so glad we did that concert because it meant so much to the people at the time. Um, but for me, that was a concert. It was a nice one, it was good to do, but nothing compared to the whole experience of Sarajevo at that time. Yeah, that, um... That came about, there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, you know, because I'm in the music industry, and I, I, it's not just Bruce's band, I've worked with a lot of bands over the years, and you end up with a lot of free t-shirts, 
and you're not always going to wear your own band's t-shirts and I, I just realized I had a lot of stuff around that I didn't actually need or want and that maybe there would be some other people out there like some fans who would like really treasure this I had backstage passes and, and stuff like that so that was one thing for me it was just getting rid of some stuff that I wouldn't really use you know um, and, and what also happened then is in the film uh, you see that guy's Slaya and he's in his bar in uh, Mostar and um, and every time me and Trevor watched the film we always said I just get thirsty when it, when it gets to that section there in Slaya's bar I just want to go and have a beer in that bar so let's go and have a beer in that bar so we did um, me and Trevor went down to Mostar and we met up with him and had a beer in his bar and while I was there I also met one of the guys who ran the Arkids Foundation um, and that's what turned me on to them. Um, also, one of the former Serious Road Trip guys, he'd also recommended our kids. Because I think with charities, obviously charities are always there to do good things. Uh, but I didn't want the money um, to go into administration or something. And our kids is a nice small charity um, where the money really is directly helping the children. Um, so yeah, I sold a few things and I'm going to start selling some more again soon as well because I've got more junk lying around and it needs to go. <laughs>